Hey there, and welcome back to Cursed Seeds, an educational monster train series where we struggle through the toughest challenges around. I like this current version of the series where someone DMs me on Discord a random challenge link and says, I had a challenging time with this one. Play this. And then I go, okay, and then I play it. So I think this, I don't actually know anything about this run other than it's Tethys with Wormkin and the submitter lost. Great, incredible news. That's, that's cursed seed gaming right there. <laughs> no idea what's going on, but we will struggle through it anyway. One of the things I always find is that Tethys is a fairly weak champion. I mean, I've said this a million times, and I will continue to say it a million times. In the universe where we're playing the DLC and going to the Divinity, Tethys struggles. And getting a 21k score, that's Arcus or Ring 7, somewhere in that vicinity, I believe. It might actually, I think you need to be like 30k to lose to Seraph. I'm not actually sure offhand. I always forget this. I wish I just paid attention, but it would be more informative. Anyway, though, 21k is pretty far along. It means that basically you've skated along some portion of the run and haven't really resolved into any meaningful strategy by the end. So kind of interesting. I can see how Tethys can do that because all you really need in the early to mid game is to get a bunch of turns and then you can throw Chillwin Tethys or something at the boss and eventually win. You can't really get away with that in once you get to either Seraph or Divinity. And sometimes you get punished for this in Ring 7 as well with, you know, big sweepers, pyre wings getting upgraded, stuff like that. Ring 7 in general is a big check. Uh, it's possible this was a death on Arcus. Even if you don't get enough turns, you need a lot. Arcus hits like a truck, especially if you're moving up to 100 shards. So it's kind of interesting. We'll see. I like leaning into Wormkin a lot on this. They, they do tend to play fairly well together, right? because your starting cards are both incants and inspires, but you have to really pick one over the other. You can't mix and match them very well. I find that something like, for instance, Siren of the Sea infusion on a Keeper of Echoes is not great, right? You'd much rather be doing a self-infuse on a Keeper of Echoes in that particular instance, in my opinion, because they're playing different games, essentially. And there are certainly a lot of things that might be good for a... Uh, for an incant line that are not good for an inspire line right so a good example might be like it's not available in this clan combo but like preserved thorns right it's a card that spawns three additional cards the stings extremely powerful in any incant line not very good in most inspire lines because those stings are not coming out purple unless of course you can do something insane like play it and have a bounding echoes and then just make everything purple and then you're good to go right Anyway, we'll see what we're actually shown here, and we'll solve it in stride. Uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, though, welcome. The idea behind this series is I am playing viewer-submitted runs. If you're playing Covenant 25 Monster Train with no mutators, and you either struggle with a run finding it somewhat cursed, or find a run that is awesome and think it's somewhat blessed, you can go to your run summary, generate a challenge link, a three-word combo similar to what you see here at the top of the screen, and send it my way. I will eventually play it for you on the channel. I have a long list of submissions here. I will inevitably unable to un be unable to get to all of them. English is hard. And uh, the, my best recommendation for submitting it to me is on my Discord server. There is a specific channel for it. Nice thing about it is if you do that, you're likely to get other people to try it before me, which means that you'll get some immediate feedback, which is great. In order to find my Discord server, it's on my main YouTube page. You scroll down, About Me section, voila, I have a link there. You can find it. Hooray. You can, of course, submit it to me however else you want to. I get some DMs on Discord, as, as is evidenced by this one. I also can get them through YouTube comments, emails, whatever. Honestly, there's a lot of platforms you can find me on, and just send them there, and I'll get them. I'll add them to the channel, and we'll make it happen. And that's about it. I don't have terribly much else to report, I don't think. So, yeah. Great. Let's go ahead and hop in on this. As always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's see what nonsense Tethys has for us today. Oh boy, Tethys. All right, click the button. Let's go. Oh, 
All right, hope you're all doing well today. I'm doing all right. It's a new day for me. I have been doing a lot of recording this weekend and I'm trying to get ahead of a variety of series. There's some a lot, a lot of different fun games I'm trying besides just Monster Train on the channel right now. So that's also exciting. Nothing secretive. You all know about them. You know, you have uh, Inkbound, of course, Wil a Wilder Myth is coming up, things like that. It might actually be in the past <laughs> in the sense of when this video goes live, but for me it's coming up, so that's exciting. And yeah, that's all I've got there. Hopefully you're doing great. Go team. All right, today let's get in on it. We are default Stygian, default Wormkin, a decent clan combo. I usually like anything with Wormkin. They're a very solid clan, in my opinion. They have all the important stuff, right? Offensive scaling, defensive scaling. They've got good infusions. They've got good attackers. They've got good setups, eggs, things like that. A lot of diversity. Big fan. Just generally very strong. So there's that. Uh, and then Stygian's also here, which is not a bad clan, but, you know, they're fine. Today we're facing Explosive, Sigil, Daedalus, Spell, Shield, Fell, Sap, Seraph. We have Ice, Tornado, Proclamation, Urchin, Spines. It's a bit of a spell weakness opener, right? It's got some good hits combined with some spell weakness. Nothing here is particularly exceptional. I like Proclamation, but it's better when it's purple, in my opinion. That's true of generally everything in Wormkin, but especially true of Extracts because it's essentially extract minus one, which is really good. I don't actually like Ice Tornado, but at least we're not stuck accidentally discarding it in this run, right? If we had Exile Stygian, we'd be hurting a lot more for this. I hate Ice Tornado with, with foregone powers. The one advantage of Ice Tornado is that it's permafrosted, you draw it once, and then if you happen to draw it multiple times, it's garbage. But yeah, all right, cool. Let's see. Today, temples are on 3, 4, 6, 7. Sure. Dupe on 8 is steel side. Nothing special. We have a steel and a magic shop on 7. The magic shop's much better with the vortex in the cave. Steel shop's just got some boons and health. Steel shop, no magic on 6. Random hell vent on the other side. Steel shop's pretty good. Vortex cave again, like that. Good steel, good magic here. We have a magic shop, no steel shop on five. We are, we do have a trinket shop with horde and vortex, which is awesome. And a vortex, a horde in the middle. How cool would it be if there were vortexes in the middle, huh? I kind of wish that was the true thing. Like you pay 15 shards and you get two removals. It would be a little more efficient than the purge stone, but it's kind of an interesting idea. I just thought of randomly. Anyway, what else? No steel shop here. Magic shops. Okay. Has money in a cave. Steel shop, no magic shop on four. I think that means we get double magics early. There is a removal dupe, Wormkin banner with a temple in the middle. That's powerful. The steel shop is pretty weak, but maybe we can leverage it. It'll depend on if we actually managed to do something useful on the steel side on ring two, which is Stygian, unfortunately. Magic shop has the Wormkin banner. Only Wormkin banner in our path is on the magic side here on ring two. Unless we skip, you know, the steel shop on four but we'll see i suppose stygian banner magic shop on three a lot of stygian banners in this run it is tethys so we're gonna look at the forge first conduit handheld totem brutal not a fan i think we can get out of our early game with a conduit play here so we'll take it i like chillwin starters in general because she just generally feels a lot stronger cuddlebeard Precious plating. We're going to take the Cuddlebeard prospectively. A Titan Sentry would pop off here. I will grab the money. It slows you down too much to skip this money, in my opinion. Spikes. If we draw well enough, I think we're fine here. I can take this. It seems scary, but we don't really rely on Conduit, or conduit to do damage here, basically. Let's just play stuff out. We blast bottom floor, kill this man. Sure, great, wonderful, we did it. We want to... I don't really care about mid floor here. I do want to reap, reap bottom, kill the back lines here. I'll make a purple upstairs, sure. Draw frozen lance here, neat, great. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put in... What's drawing up? What's coming up? It's a good turn for me to proclamation the boss. So I think we are going to here. We're going to double Frozen Land's bottom floor. 
and we sit on both of these ice tornadoes and the urchin spines. Now upstairs, this is easy. We just proclamation this guy, no problem. Fine. I think we hit a single ice tornado downstairs. Pretty strong. Make some purples up top. All right. Let's see. I think this is as simple as we triple reap him here, which is a lot of power. I'm going to make more purples upstairs with the frozen lances. This should be enough to kill him, right? Yeah, we have the kill. Great job. You just spell damage through this per first combat. It's no problem. We have enough tools to make it work. Energy Siphon, it's not good to go all in on spell weakness here. We're not going to win that way. Let's take this Flash Freeze. It at least pays out the Cuddlebeard, right? We'll take it. I'm going to grab Echo Transfer. It's not purple, unfortunately, but it's still an important scaling element for our run. And now, which way you go here? Great question. Wormkin banners tend to be stronger on average. You've got a lot of tools here, but we don't see another Steel Shop for three rings or two rings rather and if we see a titan sentry cuddlebeard pops off so let's go to the right and look see what we have it's quick plus 25 does cold kalia count as applying are we um hmm, well cold kalia i mean she applies frostbite all right sure let's give her quick and re-roll this Interesting. Yeah, we could do it. Give me multi. No, quick large is not it. I am not happy with this, but it's acceptable for now. I can grab that money. Yeah, we'll move on. This gives us a lot of cash. I want a unit draft. Yes, thank you. Great. Excellent. Unit draft. There is an echo transfer in our deck, so we can make this do more than zero damage, which is great. I'll face tank here, it's fine. We're guaranteed to clear stuff, is nice. I get the collector. The priority here should be on this conduit, right? So that I cannot die to the foot soldier, because I only sweep one right now, which is not enough to kill. So, yeah, so we need to do Frozen Lance, Frozen Lance into Echo Transfer middle, and then I just drop Ice Tornado here, and we clear out that stuff. Good. Urchin Spines, I'm looking for a Reap in back, a Frozen Lance in front, and we use this Frozen Lance upstairs to purple it up, play out a Train Steward. All right, we should be able to win just off the back of air dropping in Ice Tornado here, so that's cool good stuff yeah he's got 45 health left no questions we win good job all right cool excellent no damage taken get the trial thank you quick very powerful purple ice tornado no thank you mollusk mage titan's gratitude nope we skip is it just bounding echoes i could echo infusion here it's not bad but Bounding Echoes could connect with my existing Echo Transfer, which is big. Right? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty good. In an ideal world, I'm imagining like, you know, Sweeper plus a Carver Infusion would be really good here. Really efficient. And then we find a Multi-Strike and we make, what, two of them on the floor. Maybe we fit Tethys if possible. I like the Bounding Echoes here for that reason. Yeah. We should really look for... Ah, that's unfortunate. I could go Egg. Endless Egg. I don't really feel like that's strong here. We have minimal scaling on this. And I don't want another Sweeper, do I? No. Icy Sillifite plus Spell Line. He could... If this were Covenant 1, this would be an easy pick, but it's not. I think we skip here. I don't love that. It's a, it's a big bummer. Not a fan. I'm going to go to this magic shop. A holdover is good. A permafrost is good. Maybe we see a shark, which would be nice. Yeah, holdover on the echo transfer is how we avoid losing this run. That's great. Give me a spell chain, maybe. No, a plus 30 intrinsic. 
Wow. Okay. So of course I understand why this run is cursed. You just show me the three, two sweepers in literally every unit selection. Really, it's icy silified cold Kalias all the way down. Unreal. Skipping it this time again. Wow. It's tragic. I'm going to put minus ones in fractures because they cannot be played with conduit conveniently. Reroll this. Permafrost would still be nice. Yeah, I'm going to permafrost on the bounding echoes. We must connect it with the echo transfer. I would like to save some of my money for the steel shop. Although the steel shop does have money with it, which is at least something. Let's make a fracture free then and chill. It'll have to do. Now there is an intrinsic here, which I could put on this bounding echoes, which basically guarantees I connect the echo transfer, which I will do. And we take the cave. Copy a card five times. No, <laughs> absolutely not. We do not have a good line here. I think you X1 bounding echoes possibly. You could also X1 flash freeze and the frostbite does decent work. I didn't make it free because conduit exists. I think it's an X1 here, not an X5 ever. I know what you're thinking, Echo Transfer. It's going to be really hard to make that work. Too much purple usage, in my opinion. I think one Echo Transfer is enough. If it were purple already, it'd be different. I think we just X1 the Bounding Echoes here. It's, it's an intrinsic, and I don't know if we need more than one. I could X1 a Fracture. It's not bad, but it's not really what I want. I think X1 on the Bounding Echoes is pretty okay. We could use them at multiple points. Maybe eventually we get a... Yeah, maybe I'm going to take an X1 on the on the Bounding Echoes. It's not usually what I would go with, but it's flexible. And I like that. Let's move on. It also dodges five shards. We're going to stay sub... 50. We're going 30 shards here. It's not very much, but it's going to have to do. This plus 60 gold we sh and the money coming up, we should be able to afford a re-roll on that shop. Yeah, this is kind of what I'm thinking, right? You get that bounding echoes that I can just drop on floor one to really kind of load some stuff up. And that's cool. The other one, we 100% save for echo transfer. Great. Here, we drew it. Amazing news. And then we now get to hold this over comfortably. Let's frostbite the boss. It's permanent scaling, in my opinion. All right. I would like to downstairs kill this man. Great. We're already kind of guaranteed to get over this because of the quick, which is great. Now, it, it, this clears a lot here. I would like very much... These are extinguish triggers. Yeah, so put a train steward in to take these extinguishes and then load up the boss here. Cool. That's also frostbite that's holding on permanently. He's pretty much already dead. Let's generate purples on other floors. Yes, this train steward is just to take extinguish triggers, which is fun. <laughs> Seems good to me, right? That's very funny, actually. I think I'm going to blast the ice tornadoes on bottom. I don't feel like dealing with these. I don't feel like dealing with the extinguished triggers there, right? Yeah, it's fine. We're going to put another train steward in just to face tank it. Go downstairs, reap the boss. Every reap is high value here. So we should easily beat this, but we're very low on survivability otherwise, right? We have, like, what, 15 health to our name? Haha, <laughs> I'm in danger. I think we just slam this ice tornado, right? We do, like, 5,000 damage to the boss, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we get through this. It's a lot of incoming damage we're doing. The frostbite's adding up. It's good. All right, fine. Spike of the Stygian, it's sap, I like it. It's also got some frostbite attached to it. We have Cuddlebeard, I'll click it, sure. Guard of the Unnamed is a functional defensive line that we should consider here.
It's not what anyone wanted, but it is functional. Yikes. Okay. I have to hit multi-strike if I do this. These are... Wow, these unit drafts. Where are my Wormkin units? I could go left here. And then... Look at the Wormkin banner. A Shard Soul Carver does huge heavy lifting. And then I get a removal dupe and I ask myself, Well, w brother, what are you doing, right? Let's take the Guard of the Unnamed because I need something. I can frontline with it right it's fine let's card draw here because i'm probably ending up on incants and most of my run is going to be free but this is bad now this is a pivotal moment i think you could look for the multi-strike it's relevant to do this here because we don't see a steel shop for two whole rings but i think i want to look for a carver first i think the left side is stronger we see a first of kin, kin host vessel. These are not it. All right, so we actually do fully whiff on any useful wormkin unit. Egg would have been devastatingly bad here too. We don't even have a chance to connect the endless. No shark either with Cuddlebeard. This run is actually pretty doomed. Just really bad units. They literally showed us both sweepers three times in a row. A unit draft and two Stygian banners. actually crazy i can't believe that they did that to us i have offense in the form of quick plus this echo transfer this will get the job done so we're gonna skip here i am going to this is minus two ever i mean minus two on the spike of the stygian might be it i think it has to be guard of the unnamed into Colt Kalia. The thing you have to understand is I don't actually think there's any reason to do this now. Because I don't need to jam my floor together. Ten and piercing. I'm thinking a ten and piercing plus thirty proclamation is okay. We could dupe it. Chill wind pivot. The Chillwin Pivot does add up, I suppose. It's kind of weird. I don't need multiple levels of Conduit, right? I'm just thinking here. It's like Ice Tornado, sure, but I, I don't like those spells anyway. Let's take the Chillwin Pivot here. This at least benefits from Cuddlebeard. I'm going to get double removals. Goodbye, train stewards. You're not purple or otherwise useful. The dupe. You know, there's this interesting universe where I'm considering the self-infuse on the Guard of the Unnamed to base tank for the Sylophite. This is a problem if only because the Divinity sweeps, right? So I need survivability on my back lines if I'm going to play top floor, and I think I will need to play top floor. Unless you can, like, intrinsic this spike here. But we didn't see that. Strong argument for minus two on the spike of the Stygian. I actually really like this, right? If we can do this, maybe get a remove consume, I could potentially leverage a lot of excess ember in the form of just disable the divinity with sap. It's also purple, which is cool. I'm going to do this because this might be important. We stay under 50. I'm actually considering that pretty critical here. The dupe. Man, I would I would just dupe the spike, but there's no reason to here. I could dupe the echo transfer to speed me up. It's not bad. I would love a spell chain on that instead. But we're a little slow right now. And we have no multi-strike. Okay. This might be the single best thing I could do with my turns. Let's duplicate this. Man, this is dicey. I don't have to take this dupe if it's bad, but this is not bad. 
this helps me live the mid game and we move on at 45 shards it's actually important yeah we can take ancient hate i will scale past the point where this matters I wonder if I want to play bottom floor or not. This is curse combat is the thing I'm worried about right now. What if I just play bottom floor here, right? Yeah, here we go. First order of business is bounding echoes down, then we play the siren, then we play this sweeper here. I play the purple. I want to get the frozen lance middle. And then I think I want to sap out mid floor here. Kill that man. We have a we apply a lot of frostbite, which is very strong here. Like, this mid-floor guy, if I toss this Frostbite at him, he's going to have a bad day. 27 damage per floor. I think I can do some pretty sizable numbers here to this bottom floor dude. If I accept this damage, right? Let's think about it. At a minimum... Oh, this is pretty good. Bounding Echoes Mark two. At a minimum... Let's see. I could reap upstairs. He's taking 27, 27, so he's taking 54 over 2. If I reap him once, 31, 35. Seems okay. I'm going to play Proclamation here. It's just an incant for free. I'm going to take hits, but it's not that bad, right? He hits me twice, right? This guy, I think we can kill. All right, we did it. Good job. That's great. We double scale here. Cool. And we chill on this, I think. Sure. And we should win this combat. All right. Yeah, we do. Great work. Go team. All right. We get out of it. We took two hits. A little possibly dicey. We have very low survivability is the main problem. The drain might be the clutch because it's a repeatable play on the sap line, which is maybe enough to win Relentless. We'll take it. Return soul or... I mean, I'm already in on sap, aren't I? I don't think I need the soul crushing guilt. Let's take this return soul. It's a double purple, potentially. I must live another floor. I think it's more valuable. Let's go to the mat this trinket shop here. A lot of things we could hit. I get to cut the last two train stewards as well, which is nice. We have a decent amount of money. We can afford something. Firewall, Dun Echo, Trader's Quill, sure. Bog Slime is definitely it. This is free purples. Now, admittedly, they're not that important, but I think it's better than Tethys' scales here. We haven't really invested in the spell weakness. I'm going to re-roll the trinket shop. Serrated mandibles is pretty huge. Although pyrestone housing might also be it. That's true. That could also be it. Incant armor 2. I could do something like a multi-strike plus 25, which is great. Serrated mandibles is huge damage, though. I can take the horde in the middle here. Forever flame, cheater's hand, no thanks. Forever flame, I think is it. It's just energy savings on a, f a couple turns. Sure, we'll take it. Too bad that serrated mandibles wasn't in that middle horde. I would have taken that there. This is a very, very powerful setup. I'm gonna take the pyrestone housing prospectively though. And the rest of our money gets saved for the steel shop, and we move on, I think. Okay. Mark of Invasion. We should be okay here. This is also good money to have in advance of the steel shop coming up. I think it's really just Tethys plus Cold Kalia here. Clears top. And then we Ice Tornado downstairs. The hope was that we would hit... 
the front guy, but, you know, it's fine. We at least clear out the mid-floor a bunch. All right, here is Bounding Echoes 1, I think, for sure. So we can start some purple scaling. I'm going to creep once middle, return soul here, and I'm going to hit the frozen lance. We're going to pop this guy. It's a lot of purples we're applying. I want to save the spike of the Stygian here, so let's chill. We get the Collector. I need to do a bunch of damage to this guy upstairs. We should have no problem doing it, though, right? Yeah, we get out. Great work. I'd like to avoid taking this 10, if possible. Let's just blast him. Great. We're going to reap on middle. I'm going to start working on this tank. This big guy is a problem for us, so... Yeah, let's begin by hitting him as hard as we can. Frozen Lance, go! Is this... I think I would love to connect my Echo Transfer here. This guy's gonna hit me for... a lot. Let's just sap him. I think it's right to do it. He's gonna hit me for a chunk, and then I actually save seven Pyre Health that way. We have the purples that we can avoid. We can take this, right? We're fine. Purple, purple. It'll do. All right, thank you, Tethys. Tethys actually doing some heavy lifting on this one. We are Echo Transfer 1, Echo Transfer 2. We clear the floor, which is great. I'm just going to go ahead and return soul the non-purple echo transfer and pop it. And then my plan here is to spike the boss for just 27 frostbite, 5 sap, and chill. True. Okay. Keep playing other things upstairs. Our, our plan here is... Fracture, Proclamation, Drain him. Alright. Great, we get out. Good. The sap is going to be very is a very important part of our survivability here. Tethys dies, but Frostbite gets through it. Okay, this is dicey. Second drain? I really don't want to take two because they conflict, but I might not have a choice, right? I kind of don't have a choice. I think we need this scaling. Unearthed Remains. Unfortunately, the purple scaling is not a critical part of our run, or this would be nuts. We didn't see anything useful for that. Ancient Resonance. Redundant with Cold Kalia. Let's just skip for money. It's unfortunate. We go right. I need to see stuff and things, please. A plus 25? Yeah, okay, sure. We're going to take a bunch of stuff here. A minus 2. Make the spike super big. Now, I do think we want a plus 25 in Cold Kalia. Yeah, I'm looking for a plus 25 in a multi-strike here, because this will be necessary, I think. Second quick, no chance. Yeah, it's cursed. Alright, we're going to go ahead and put a... The Guard of the Unnamed gets an incant armor too here it's pretty doomed we're gonna get our removals here removals are as simple as ice tornadoes i think they are the least important cards here one is gone for sure i actually don't hate frozen lances and things i'm using my purples for these echo transfers pretty regularly so ice tornado causes me some issue I can always pay out the Urchin Spines with a Proclamation later. Yeah, let's dumpster these. We did just draft two drains, remember. The cave today has... Evan's Gold. It's pretty good, actually, right? Petty Theft. It's too late for Petty Theft to be useful. I'm going to just take Evan's Gold. Sure, great. 59. Amazing. Where are my future Steel Shops? We pretty much have to go both steel shops and hope we live this floor. 60 shards. I can ratchet upright. 
25 here, 15 here, I can go to 40. I should only take anything if I think it's really useful. A minus two on drain does let me double stack this later or spell chain this later. That's certainly true. We'll take a minus two on a drain perspectively and move on. We did have our enemy, our other friend lost on fell. So that is a concern. That said, fell is a good pick here. We have sap as a weapon, which is really strong. So sap lets us get away with a lot here. Let's just drop this urchin spines in her real quick. You never know. We might be able to connect the dots on that a little bit. Let's just load this up. We're going to go ahead and reap her a whole bunch. I'm going to click return soul and bring back a fracture and just blast her. Six reap. This is serrated mandibles would be doing some heavy lifting here if it weren't for everything else. Okay, we have not yet drafted. Interesting. We have not yet seen one of our two echo transfers, which does cause some challenge here. So this sweep only does, we take, what is this, four? Yeah, we take 20 in our front, which is a bummer. Let's go ahead and fracture the boss and just send it on a spike on her. And we're going to play the one sap. Okay. We take 20 upstairs, but we do clear it, which is something. We've got some sap going. All right, great. We're going to keep... I'm willing to accept this guy is going to cause some armor problems for me here because that's okay. We hit him with a bunch of frostbite at least, which I think will hopefully get us out of this. Right? I think so. I accidentally clicked out of my screen. All right. He's not killing us. Great. We took a couple hits there. I think we do need to, we have to hit here on these two, right? 100%. Man, we're close to getting him. I guess I really should have second bounding echoes here, shouldn't I have? Yeah, all right. We're doing just enough to kill this guy, which is kind of ridiculous. How much am I doing to him? 61 plus 5, 20 plus 12, 32, 67 is 99. 99 damage here, right? Yeah, we're at 66 plus 32, right? 61, yeah, 66 plus 32 is 98, 103, 113. He is dead by a little bit. So we should sap off floor. Okay, make a purple on another floor. Great, don't mess around with this guy. I need him to die. I need 14 health. Don't mess around with this, okay? We need to kill these enemies big time. Oh my gosh, we generated enough reap damage. We actually killed this backline, dude. Unbelievable. Okay. We look like we might actually live this combat, which is impressive. All right, we're over the major threshold of scariness here, which is important. Let me be clear. <laughs> we're over the very dicey part. Great news. Increase our damage. Leave the fracture in. I'd like to hopefully hit return soul on this sap. Incredible. Incredible work. We're going to go ahead and burn that other drain real quick. All right. Excellent job. Okay. All right. Make purples. Make purples. Okay. Great news. Make purple. It's worth it. The incant is also still worth it. Okay. Great. Draw a drain, please. All right, we get out of fell. Okay. Drain does almost all of the real heavy lifting here, if I'm being honest with you. 
Yeah, okay, thank you, Drain, very cool. Honestly, also Cuddlebeard doing heavy lifting. We get out of Fell, which is uncharted territory now, huh? Eternal Kinstone actually really good. It means I can always play a purple Echo Transfer. I will take that, actually. Second card draw? I don't, I don't think anything else is particularly better to play. Yeah, so we take second card draw here, and we go farm steel shops and hope right just straight up hope endless you know i'm at the point where i actually think we don't ever infuse here and we just straight up keep this guard of the unnamed chillin on my floor i i just don't see the value in it i'm looking at this like well you know that could be it no spell chain on this run either bummer now, having an Intrinsic does mean I can potentially connect an Intrinsic Bounding Echo here. I can just Intrinsic this Echo Transfer. It's pretty decent. But I think more importantly, we need to sap the boss to like zero ASAP. So I'm thinking we Intrinsic that Sap Stone. That's where I'm at. Conduit 2. I guess I'll take Chillwind 2, right? It does more damage. Sure. It ratchets up for Relentless faster. Sure. I'm just going to go ahead and put an Incant Armor 2 on this guard here, I think. I will keep re-rolling for the Endless, I mean the Multi-Strike, hopefully. This guard is getting a plus 25. Honestly, that's great. We Incant for, what is this, 7 Bloody Armor, and he starts with 40 health. Sure, man, let's go. Give me a Multi-Strike, please, Monster Train. No? Alright, Cursed. Truly, truly a nightmarish scenario. I can't imagine what the strat here is how is this run is awful this run is truly abysmal in every fashion all right i'm gonna go to the steel shop right we're going we're gonna keep looking because if i don't see a multi-strike this run is just truly catastrophically failed i think we can beat serif just by spamming sap on him but we don't have a spell chain we don't have multi-strike what is this? Now, I do think intrinsic into a sap card is mission critical here, right? I think we must do this, in my opinion. Yes. And then I can get 15 shards by taking the horde in the middle, and that's it. 100 shards is enough. Good grief. This run is so bad. Do I buy removals here? It's actually not a bad idea to cut a couple things. Frozen Lances benefit from being free and purple generators. That won't be necessary once we have purples on the Echo Transfers plus the Eternal Kinstone in play. Fractures are pretty effective at murdering enemies. They can do damage to heavies. I think Fracture's generally better than Frozen Lance here. Let's cut a Frozen Lance here. Yes, I think it is just going to be a Frozen Lance cut. It's fine. All right, 295. I want to save what I can for this Trinket Shop. We move on. I can think of some really doomed combats here. Right, we're pretty weak. This is not one of them. Don't click spikes. Spikes, when I have this sweeper, is a great way to die. Yep. We don't get this money. Incredible. Thanks, Monster Train. Very cool. It could have been Spell Shield, right? If it had been Spell Shield, we would have been fine. This is kind of what we're hoping for, for our Seraph, or not Seraph necessarily, but Divinity play. Because I can apply 5 sap immediately, and if I end it... 100 pack shards that zeroes out the divinity sweep damage on turn one thanks to the forever flames right yeah you just immediately sap him to zero which is awesome and then the only damage that comes in if i can keep him at zero is to the guard which can face tank for me so that's pretty good our goal 190 damage by turn three Great, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> Let's... Greed a little. 
greed just a little bit. Okay, great work. This guy might hurt. At least he didn't get upgraded. All right, play every card. This is first Bounding Echoes, yes. This lets me get over 25, which prevents me from insta-dying, which is pretty nifty, I think. We can Urchin Spines and actually push him out with the Proclamation. So we should Frostbite on the 290 coming up now. And honestly, keep sapping him too. We need to do damage to that guy. Okay, good. We do have both other things here. What left? What is left? It's purple, not purple yet. All right, I'm going to just go ahead and drop the Bounding Echoes here. We're going to do as much heavy lifting as we can. I'm going to sap him because I, I guess I should... Hold up, we should return soul first. I'm going to work on killing him. This is going to be my Spike of the Stygian. Hit that guy. Hit that guy. Great. We should be able to kill him. Yeah, great. He doesn't do any damage to me. Now the hope is that... There's really not much that can go wrong here besides... It's actually kind of nice. We, can, we do take a hit here, right? But it's six damage. We actually connected Tethys with it, which is good. We're clearing this floor. Good. Great. Excellent work. Let's work on the 190 on this next floor. He is the scary one. Great. I'm just gonna... The incant really doesn't do much for me, but I guess I might as well, right? Yeah, sure, why not? I've got the purples for it, huh? Okay. Keep scaling. The enemies in the back do not matter on bottom. We're just gonna keep sapping him now. We clear this floor. If I can just sap him a whole bunch, we should be okay. Our goal is to not incant him a bunch. Right? I could reap him, but there's really no reason to do it. Doesn't matter. Why do this? Just sap him. Ah, we whiffed. All right, fine. I'm going to go ahead and click the proclamation for the incant here. Sure. Doesn't really do anything. But it's fine. Okay. I'm going to avoid clicking the cards that do things like apply frostbite. We're just going to sap him to zero and let this sit. We make it through ring seven. Fairly fortunate here that we rolled this boss. We only took six damage. We could not take the spikes. It's a bummer. Do you just click guardian's amulet for more sap? Just unironically click Guardian's Amulet here. Hey, you know, if I could maybe do this right, I could connect the sap with the drain. Sure, man. I need everything I can get. It's not Soul Crushing Guilt, although I guess I could get away with this, right? With the Eternal Kinstones in play. I don't think it's Soul Crushing Guilt, though. We have sap. I think we're all right. I think we're okay. I may come to regret that, but I think we're okay. Please, Monster Train, Multi-Strike. You have one job. One job, Monster. Oh my jeez, we did it. We did it. We made it to Ring 8, y'all, and we get the Multi-Strike payout. Incredible. And that's... Oh, that's reassuring. That's very good. <laughs> that's very good. You, you finally see Hardened Hull, by the way, which is also its own brand of hilarious. I think the Endless Egg line falls apart long before this. Base charge is pretty cool, actually. Although Echo Seedling is busted because we, we get to triple up the Spike of the Stygian. Yeah, it's got to be Echo Seedling here. 100%. That's free sap. All right. Now, we're online. We are online. I can afford to re-roll this shop and look for something cool. Let's go ahead and do that. See what we get. Lightstone casing, huh? We've managed to create a really sad, uninfused floor of Monster Train video gaming. 
and I still think we have a good shot at winning here, which is pretty sad. Even with this multi-strike, what am I going to do? Self, like, dupe it? No, absolutely not. It's never correct to do that. I just want big tanker man in front. So the dupe here very well could be as simple as... What? What do you cut? The Spike of the Stygian? Not bad, but I did just get, what, two free copies thanks to Echo Seedling? Yeah, true. Another Echo Transfer? I don't actually mind. It's probably just another Return Soul, if I'm being honest with you. The card is good at incanting, but it's also, more importantly, very good at chopping down garbage, right? It chops down trash. I think it unironically is simply to dupe the return soul here. Just chop down on trash. If my eventual replays become what? Like eternal kinstone, echo transfers, and then all the drains? It's pretty decent. Maybe like a guardian's amulet gets hit every so often. I'm good with that, honestly. That's pretty decent. And then we can just have one return. It's basically, it's poor man's spell chain return soul. We just use one return soul to burn the other. And then that's, I mean, that's basically it. All right. We're staying at 100 shards because this run is bad. I am going to just straight up purchase a removal on a frozen lance here, I think. Improve our card density a little bit actually going to be one of these one cost fractures right at least the frozen lances are free on floor yeah we're going to drop one of those and i think we're going to save the rest of our money for pyre attack power which combined with our frostbite might save us from a very doomed mini boss or something and straight up i'm going right now 100 out of 100 let's go fight seraph this is one of the worst curse seeds i've seen in a while they really did it up for me here huh we at least see the multi-strike. We survived to the very end and saw the multi-strike, which is fantastic. You're going to get a chance to see what I kind of want to show you here. We're going to we just play the Frozen Lance. Before you touch any Bounding Echoes, we straight up just load this man. And then you just drop all of this into him. And he is now 9 sap, which is disabled. Great. And I think we sit on... We don't drain here. I mean, I guess I could drain here. It's not a problem. I only need one of these bounding echoes. Sure, actually. I'm fine with that. He's basically already killed. But I need to draw into... Yeah, we need to hit here. So bounding echoes right away. So I can get some damage present. We're going to sap... Hit the dark wings here for damage. Scale here, I think, is necessary. Hit the Dark Wings for damage. What would I pull back? Frozen Lance, possibly? I should bring back something. Let's bring back a Frozen Lance here. That's an acceptable burn, I'm pretty sure. We're probably going to be ahead of this. <laughs> I have not seen a combat where Sap Seraph threatened me so much in a good long while. We got pretty lucky here. None of the heavies got upgraded. Put some purples on this floor. Yeah, all right, sure. We push a lot of frostbite through. Seraph is going to have a bad day. We at least drew... Yeah, okay, cool. We have at least drawn the most important stuff. We kill this dude, which is pretty clutch. I'm going to fracture here. Can we chill? Okay, we clear that guy. He comes back. This is scary, but... Fine. First order of business is to return soul the bounding echoes here so I can finally connect it with some stuff. Do damage, please. Punch this man. Great work. We clear the floor. We have a heavy dark wings coming up. Work on that guy, please. Okay, we get sapped again. It's a bummer. But it is what it is. If we can kill this heavy. 
I think we're going to have a decent time. Blast them. I can't believe we cleared the heavy. Sap Seraph. It's Sap Seraph who's getting sapped because he's Seraph. Okay, we're slowly getting there. Scale, scale. Load this stuff up. Let's return soul back. The fracture here to hopefully get some fracture in. Let's just play the Guardian's amulet freely because everything was free here. And then I'm actually going to sap this gilded wings because he's walking on me i want to take only two damage remember every little bit there might matter and i think we're already ahead on all right we finally clear it we're clearing 240s incredible work go team seraph's looking pretty rough let's keep loading him up though and then i let's incant upstairs all right I think we get out of Seraph. Woof. Okay, make big numbers, please. It's good. Just go ahead and proclamation up here. I think I am going to just keep sapping Seraph here, right? There's very little reason not to. Make big number damage on him. And I think we skate by. Okay, click the most important cards. Go ahead and drain him. Oh, of course it hit the other drain, but it's fine. 12 sap. Is it enough? Yes, it is enough. Amazing work. And we can also just, you know, immediately Guardian's Amulet this floor. We get the return soul. I can bring back the drain. And we're honestly in a pretty okay spot here. Okay, we sap him down to zero, take no damage. Mini bosses will be the biggest challenges for this run, hands down. So we can, we didn't get, we don't get sapped on divinity, which is nice. A good draw order means we can stay ahead of this, but mini bosses are the big threat here. I think we beat divinity and relentless. Just early turn, early turn, Spike of the Stygian and like drawing into a my echo transfers will be critical here. So let's get these down. All right. I'm willing to give up one sap here in exchange for this eternal kinstone that I think is going to be really important to play. True. We spike first and then we spike two more times. Save the Urchin Spines. I can maybe connect this with a mini boss or something. All right. This is promising. I'm going to hold the Echo Transfer here. We're going to incant on this floor. It might be worth it to steel work on the Steel Wings a little bit, huh? This next floor, I think we clear without too much fanfare. Yes. All right. I need my second. Please. I think this is going to be one of my echo trance or one of my bounding echoes right here. It connects with a drain. The other one will hopefully be the other drain, the proclamation, the echo transfer here. All right. Great. Good job. Okay, how are we going to approach this now? I think we are going to return soul and we fracture out these guys so I don't die. That's pretty good. I need to sap the divinity here. Okay, okay, let's think about this. You need to think about this for a hot moment here. I think I'm willing to go four, I can go three echoes deep in the bottom floor. I'm just thinking about how do we work against the mini bosses coming up. 
I think we go like this. That gives up the second permanent, but that's okay. I only need the one for these echo transfers. Let's we we're going to fracture the spikes individual. This is very important. And then we hit drain. Oh, of course it misses. I'm I'm upset about that, but it's a bummer. I can stop some of this incoming damage by hitting upstairs. Sure. Okay, fine. We got the hardest mini boss. Great. Amazing. Uh, incredible news. Thank you, Monster Train. Very cool. The big health guy. 675 health. How in the world are we killing you? The first thing I need to do is I actually need to, like, Urchin Spine's proclamation his butt. Or I could consider sapping him to zero. Also an option. Also an option. We're going to return soul here. Unfortunately, we didn't draw into the second drain, but I'm not mad about it. I think this does need to be bounding echoes here. We're going to load up mid floor on this one. I think the play here is you proclamation downstairs. We're going to frostbite him and then we double frozen lance him to open it up. Then I'm going to bounding echoes mid floor and we get the echo transfer up here. We're not dead. This floor does not do a lot of damage and we did have golden vault loaded for this. Okay, begin scaling. Great. Work on this lunatic. This mini boss is going to murder me if I'm not careful. Yeah, this mini boss completely demolishes me if I am not careful. I am poised to take an additional 22 here. Let's sap this mini boss. I need to watch Divinity coming in. Ugh, taking damage. Okay. Raise your damage threshold. Hit him with Reap. I think I have to return soul a drain here to avoid death does he kill me he very well might but i kept the heavens gold so here we are champ let's find out today do i live Oh, buddy. All right, we get past the first, buddy, man. Now, I did just neuter my own sap generation, so we are very scared. Yes, we're very scared. We got... Oh, my God, the other heavy here. Okay, we have to... We have to work at this. Guardian's Amulet must be played upstairs. I need to keep the Divinity doing zeros here. Proclamation this boss, absolutely. My return soul here is straight up just proclamation. I just need to push numbers into that mini boss. He is in front, which is a big win for me. We're over 300 damage. Okay, we've pushed 100 at him so far. So we're so the important thing is we're over 300, which means we're clearing bosses. All right, here's Urchin Spines, and here's a friggin' proclamation on him. Incredible work. Amazing news. We are going to just hit the... Hit the Guardian's Amulet up here. Yikes. It's the Spikes floor, yeah? Okay. What are we at? 360? Reap this man. Okay. Yikes. Spikes are rough. I think if we kill him, we win this run. 
If we kill you, we win this run. Monster Train, we did it. Monster Train. Yes. Monster Train. Okay. All right. And then we just need to draw into the drain here, maybe. With any luck. Didn't draw into the drain. Hold. Hold. Return soul. You see it. Guardian's amulet. Oh, guard of the unnamed gets the kill. What do you mean? Guard of the unnamed 1v1s this boss. Play a weight of contrition. I take three damage to the pyre. What? He can do better, right? Yeah, because we, we get a little more damage in. Un... Believable. <laughs> That's just silly. Amazing work. Go team. I take three damage to Pyre, but I have four Pyre health remaining. Behold my victory. It's enough damage. She does die, but Guard of the Unnamed wins. Y'all, we are... <laughs> this was truly doomed. Every shop is, like, this run was cataclysmically bad. And my general philosophy here is that if Monster Train is going to constantly show you dirt, man, the 43k score. Oh, gosh. Let's go to the challenge. Oh, man. I'm feeling good about this. Can't believe we actually won. That's insane. <laughs> this was disgusting. I think every decision we made was mission critical for this to succeed. I'm actually very happy we have this episode because it's not often I feel like I actually get a truly a truly cursed run that I managed to barely pull out. Without the multi strike on ring 8 we do lose. I mean, there is there is no no other solution to this. I don't we don't scale to the point where we fight those mini bosses successfully. I don't my general philosophy, I mentioned this briefly it, just before I interrupted myself is Monster Train has to show you something, right? Now, it's not obligated to show you something because it's all RNG, right? But think of a few ways we could have found tools to succeed here, right? Ways that would have been successful, possibly. What else could... I mean, even things like me drafting both drains. Mission critical, honestly. Even if sometimes they discarded each other, having two of them meant that I could... Where is it? Return soul one of them and keep the other. That stupid Guardian's Amulet pickup, this card actually saved our run. We were so close on the sap because I had to invest so much into the mini bosses to avoid dying. That first mini boss especially, that this was a big struggle. Random dupe on an echo transfer because the game never showed me spell chain, right? But also, I never got an opportunity to upgrade the Guardian's Amulet and only had three Ember the whole time. There's a lot of things here that really kind of add to our ability to succeed. Stuff like Cuddlebeard actually do this heavy lifting, right? You have to understand, if we apply enough Frostbite in Relentless, thanks to Tethys and a variety of other creatures, like, like Cold Kalia, for instance, we're able to use Cuddlebeard to stack that Frostbite up high enough that we're able to use Guard of the Unnamed Survivability to win Relentless because the Frostbite will kill the boss. Very important stuff here. The random Pyrestone housing, mission critical. That plus 25 health in Cold Kalia, mission critical. I can't even begin to describe how important that ended up being. Sweep combat on Divinity would have caused me problems. And uh, not just sweep, but spikes waves. I was looking at this like, man, I need health on this. My initial plan was to put the guard into the Cold Kalia, which probably would have been fine. But I was so close on shards, and I needed to play it so close to the chest in order to win this, that, yeah. I would be shocked if someone could find a hard, a high shard win for this run. You, can, you find your first multi-strike on ring 8, okay? And you give up pretty much everything in order to do it. But most importantly, you find it on ring eight, but you you have 
nothing good. There is a Nameless Siren in this run, by the way, so you could theoretically Nameless Siren infused with Guard of the... Actually, no, I think the Guard of the Unnamed competed with the Nameless Siren in that one banner, which was coming out of Daedalus. I actually think if memory serves, they competed, which means you couldn't have gotten both Nameless Siren and the Guard. If you could get them both, I think... I think you could formulate a floor that is basically just Tethys and two Nameless Sirens with multi-strike in the end. But if you don't have the Guard of the Unnamed, you're dead, right? You die fast because you have no survivability. You might, you might be able to pull this off with Nameless Siren. I... I don't know about that, though. I think the quick provides a lot of important survivability to the floors. Without quick on the nameless, uh, without quick on the nameless iron, because I mean, I guess you see it later, right? Because we go to the steel shops, we see quick. You could play quick multi incant armor two, nameless siren, find a second one. It's tough to actually articulate that run, though. I think you might struggle on mid floor, mid runs, or, you know, the rings four, five and six. It's interesting. I think it might be possible to win this with Nameless Siren, though. We were shown it. It was shown late is the problem. But so your mid floors would have been, man, your ring four would have just been a naked Nameless Siren with no upgrades. Right. I think that's accurate because I had to go. I went to the removal dupe. I guess you could go to that magic shop. I, I'm just thinking through the possibility. I think this run might be winnable with Nameless Siren, but I also think it might fall apart. I think the Cold Kalia might actually be really important to winning. Yeah, man, our our sap was really bad on Divinity. I think Nameless Sirens might have might not have made it either. It's really interesting to think about, but. It does clean up by ring eight, right? Because you go to the steel shop, which has the dupe. So if you had a nameless siren at that point with an incant armor two, a quick, you buy the multi there, you then dupe it immediately and you have two of those things and you have an actual run playing floor that scales, which is nice. I think hard pivoting at that point is pretty risky. I think the guard of the unnamed was the better draft there. Because you never get the guard plus the siren, right? So you're basically looking at... I guess you could self-infuse the siren, but again, you're so low durability. It would be tough. I think you could articulate the nameless siren win, but I think it's also extremely difficult. Uh, similar to the difficulty we had here. So a tough run, all the same. But we do get the win. We got there. And we got there with some pretty weird stuff and no infusions, weirdly enough. So... It's Monster Train. We make it, though, right? Echo Seedling into that Spike of the Stygian, mission critical. Let me tell you how important that was to actually winning this run. Just a ton of extra stuff here. The Intrinsic on the Spike of the Stygian, minus two, very important stuff. Uh, all things awesome, but... But yeah, uh, I mentioned this. I think I've interrupted myself twice. My general philosophy is that Monster Train... I, I think I actually mentioned this. I did complete this thought. Never mind. I, I think... I generally believe that there has to be something shown that gives you the ability to art to move to the win somehow. And we saw some pieces of it here. Eventually, we got the multi-strike, but that could have also been something else, right? I could imagine a couple other relics that maybe get us there, so... Anyway, not much else to add. I think I'm pleased to have played it. I'm glad we got our Tethys win for the week. Go team. So I'm going to let you go there. Whew. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. As always, you can give the video a like if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Except before I leave, I'm going to actually remember to look at the submitters run. I have forgotten this before. What did you do? It's a very similar run. Look at this. They did something very similar here. They went with a large stone on the cold Kalia. Ah, but no quick. I think the quick is actually really important here because shade wings will completely demolish you. You're not fast enough. Yeah. It's interesting. We actually, this run is very similar to mine, but they fell apart. They found a double stack on drain. Very cool. That would have been nice. It's actually similar, but I think the quick is a game changer. Very important for survivability. Look at this. They even have the same bounding echoes. 
we have. I made a second one, but like this is this is actually very useful to see, right? It's how close this run was. A single change changed everything. They have the spike. They have a lot of stuff here that are very similar to me. They actually went to a magic shop, which is cool. They must have. Where did they find this multi strike? Am I crazy? Where did they find it? I might just be completely lunatic. I might be a lunatic. They didn't make it to ring eight, right? They died on shade wings, it looks like. I found mine at ring eight. Where was it? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. All right. Someone's going to leave a comment in the video in the video below, and they're going to be like, you idiot, you skipped multi-strike or something like that. Unreal. I thought I re-rolled every, every steel shop. Well, I'm not going to let that ruin my day. You know what? That's okay. We got there in the end. We figured it out. All right. Take care, everyone. Woof.